Before we begin, let us take a few moments to worship the Supreme One, the Infinitely Compassionate One, the Sublime One, the Lord Buddha. To do so, please join me in reciting the Namaskar three times, all together and with me. <coughs> Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa just a show of hands, put it, put your hand up if today is your first time at the monastery. Okay. So, for all our newcomers, welcome to our monastery. Now, uh, we would like to give our most warmest of welcomes. So, <clears throat> today, for most of you, today is Dakineyu. Right. This is an almsgiving where we all get together to offer to hundreds of monks, hundreds of disciples of the Mahayana, oh, hundreds of, of monks. Or are we giving it to monks? See, the amount of merits that we can accumulate is not always about how many. If it was about how many, then our merits are always limited. For example, what is more beneficial? Giving to 10 people or giving to 100 people? Now, number-wise, if we look at quantity-wise, 100, obviously, 100 is always better. Then if I asked you 100 or 1,000? 1,000, of course. Thousand or million? Million, of course. Million or infinite? Now what? Infinite. However, there's always an issue, isn't there? That issue is, how can you give to an infinite number of people? Because infinite is what? Infinite's a concept. You can never get infinite. What, a number that is so big that we can't give a number we call infinite. So how do we give to an infinite number of people? Well, you can't. You can never give to an infinite number of people, but what can you give to? The infinite virtues of the Noble Triple Gem. Anyway, I know most of you have given and most of you are very meritorious and love to help another person. So I'm not here to talk about merits, don't worry. Today I'm actually here to talk about what's special about October. October 1st is a very special day for, for many people. What's special about October the 1st? 1st of October. Children's Day, of course. Right? It's a time where children are all celebrating the fact that they are children and we reminisce the time where we were also children. And what's so special is, I think is, is very, who knows how October 1st became Children's Day. But what is also very special is, in the same month, we have another special day. What day is that? Elder's Day. We got Teacher's Day. Where we celebrate our teachers. Now, this is very special. I think October is actually, is, you can say, packed with very special occasions. Because number one, first day of October, we have Children's Day. 
And then, as if, if I remember correctly, on the 6th of October, we have Teacher's Day. These are so close together that, you know, it almost feels as though they are related. Are they not? Children's Day and Teacher's Day are related. I want you to go back, back to the time when you were a child. When you didn't know from right from wrong, from good to bad, all you knew is, I want to play. Now, within this time, within this, e this era of your life, this childhood, this era that we call childhood, we had no idea, had no clue on who we want to be, on what we wanted to do. I remember, I remember very vividly that one day, you know, when I was probably in uh, grade one or grade two, one of my favorite teachers, they came up to me and asked, son, what do you want to be when you grow up? Now, when I was in grade one and grade two, I had no clue. I had no idea. So I put my teacher on pause, went home and asked my father. Father, dad, my teacher is asking me what I want to be when I grow up. What do you think? Now, something that you all realize is your parents will always push dreams that they couldn't fulfill. You've seen that, right? Your parents will always push dreams they couldn't fulfill. So my father always wanted to be a pilot. So what did I? So what did he say? Puta, become a pilot. Right? You know, if you're a pilot, you get lots of money. You can go abroad. So me being a very impressionable child thought hmm being a pilot would be a good thing I would be able to travel the world and all this and then what then I went to my teachers and said look teacher I want to be a pilot and so what the teachers say do you know what you have to do to become a pilot don't I just need to get into a plane and like start driving like um, my, my mom does in the car no, no, no. There's a lot more to do. You first have to learn. And I, I remember a couple years later, when me and, and, and several of my friends were talking, I told them I want to be a pilot. And then one of the, my friends were like, oh, have you seen this video? And it shows me several videos of planes crashing. And after that, I thought, no. <laughs> Would I risk my life? For others, uh, no. And uh, I was like, uh, what do you want to be now? What do you want to be? And my friend was like, you know, I want to be an engineer. So what did I want to be? An engineer. Now, I wanted to show you that this is the same thing that's happened to all of our lives. In all of our lives, the most special person in our lives is who? Now, you can say your mother and father, but they're special because why? They did what for you? They taught you. They're the teachers. They're the teachers that have helped us day in and day out. From the moment we opened our eyes to this world, seeing this world, experiencing the world for the first time, they were the people who were around us. So this is why after Children's Day, the next special day is what? Teacher's Day. Because without teachers, where would we be? Just remember, just remember, just like when, your te when my teacher asked me what I wanted to be, your teachers have also asked you. Now, I'm not talking about your school teachers. I'm not talking about your parents' teachers or your parent slash teachers. I'm talking about the teacher who opened your eyes. The teacher who opened your eyes and asked you, do you know what you're doing? Do you know what you're doing? Are you truly happy?
Now they ask the same question my teacher asked me, right? Do you know do, do you know what you want to be when you grow up? But this time your teacher asked you something different, something so profound that it took us a moment to think, am I truly happy? And so we gave our teacher on a pause and we said, oh, wait, let me think about that. And then you spend the next maybe month, maybe week, maybe several months, several weeks <coughs> thinking about this. Am I truly happy? Next time you go to your teacher and you say, no, I'm not truly happy. I have, I have these, these periods or these phases of happiness, but the next moment I'm not. I have these, these feelings of, of high highs, but the next moment I have the lowest of lows. I would not call that true happiness. I am not truly happy. Then what did your teacher do? Then do you know how to become truly happy? And then what did you, and then what did you say? No, please tell me how. Do you see, Teacher's Day is one of the most special days in, in, in this entire year. A day where we remember all of our teachers. Just, just try to imagine a life where you did, not, you did not learn to count to ten. Even that teacher is a teacher that is so special to you, is it not? Imagine not knowing how to count to ten. So if I ask the children here, Right? Can you count to ten? They'll say, of course. I can do it with my eyes closed. See, those teachers are the ones who helped us get to where we are. They're the people who have helped us to get to this moment. And that's why Teacher's Day, for me at least, is an extra special day. Now, I remember several years back, right, I wanted to give something to my teachers. I wanted to give something to my teachers. So myself and several of, of my fellow monks got together. And, you know, in schools, do you remember what you did for Teacher's Day? What did you do? You made a card for your teacher. And you said, oh, happy Teacher's Day. And you write a, you write a very special note inside. And then you give it to them. Is it just me who've done this? Have you not done this? Yes, yes. So I thought, you know, I should do the same thing. So for, for all my teachers, I thought, you know, I'm going to write a card and give it to them. And I remember very clearly the, the, the day I decided to do that. So I got a card, wrote it, had several monks join me and wrote a card, then went to my teacher. And then I remember going and saying, teacher, happy Teacher's Day. And this is not, this is, this is me with my, my, with my teacher in the monastery. So I'd give them the card and say, happy Teacher's Day. Now, you've all listened to these gateway sermons, right? Yes, you've all listened to sermons. What do you think he said? Out of your experience with your with listening to sermons, what do you think my teacher told me? Keep the card. Keep the card. Like, my gift, it cannot be a card. because that's not what I expect from you. Your teachers will never expect you to go and give them a gift because they, they, they don't care about your gifts. What do your teachers want from you? You see, teachers, what do your teachers want for you, from you? One thing and one thing only. What's that? Your own what your own happiness your own salvation they literally i remember giving the card and uh he because because you know uh 
uh, he's he's always he always wants us to be happy. So he takes the card and he opens it and he reads it, and uh, then he gives it back and says, "I don't want this. This is not the gift I want. Please give me the gift I want." So I asked, "What is it that you want?" Not a, not a card, not a gift. Come back to me one day and say, "Teacher, I am hundred percent happy. That is the gift you can give me. Until then, go. <laughs> come back, come back every year and see if you've done it. Until that one year, you can give me the gift. Until then, no, you can't give me a card. Now the same teacher, your teachers and my teachers are the same here." Now you have to ask yourself: Can you give your teacher the gift they want? Are you trying to give your teacher the gift they want? Are you? If you are, good. If you want, well, be a good student. And for Teachers' Day, try to give your teacher the best gift they can possibly give. Now. I also want to talk about you know a problem that they say the world currently faces. So I was thinking about Children's Day because I have a great fortune of talking to lots of children, children from all across the world, and it amazes me to see how how similar and different people are. People from all over the world, right? Uh, every child from all across the world is, exact, is exactly the same. They are all people, all children, who are trying to make make themselves what? Trying to make themselves become someone. They all try to do something to become someone. And I, when I was when I was thinking about you know Children's Day and what what Children's Day truly means, the first issue I see everyone. Now it's not just children who have this issue; it's ch- people through all ages. Is this is this inability to to be satisfied? We find it so incredibly hard to be satisfied at this moment. We are always looking for something extra. For example, when you're home alone or when you're at home and you have nothing to do, what's the first thing that comes to your head? Or let's say before you go to sleep, what do you do? What is it? What is your normal habit that you do before you go to sleep? This is because of our inability to be satisfied. Now, you see, I can tell you about my life. And I know most of you will be able to relate. I remember in my past, I used to have a rectangle object constantly in a pocket or a hand. This will be the source of my life. This will be the this. It had its own battery. It had its own battery, but it was the battery of my life as well. Now, what is this? What is this? So a special object that can power life. I'm given an estimate here. I'm guessing at least ninety-five percent of you right now probably have one near you. I can happily say I don't. <laughs> And that is what the phone. You see, I, this is not. I, I'm not against this. Please don't. Please don't. Don't think I'm against this. I am not against, because I think it's it's a marvel of technology. Because before we had a way of communicating, before we had social media, life was very hard. See, I was not born in an era where we had to send mail to one another. I I have never I don't remember ever writing a letter, putting into an envelope, putting a stamp, and sending it to the mailman. 
I don't remember ever doing that. But there used to be a time, of course. Most of you will remember being remember doing that. But now we have an, uh, we have a device that can help us do this instantly. Help people connect from all over the world in one moment. Because back then, the, the way a message would be given from one place to another would be on horseback. So in the 18th century, in the 18th century, if I remember correctly, uh, there was a, a person, an artist, who was uh, called by, I think, a palace to come across and, and do a painting. So he had a family, right? He had a wife and two children, and his wife was expecting a third. So he he wanted to take the chance because if he goes, he'll get lots of money and, and he'll get a name and he wants this. So he leaves his wife and goes many kilometers, many miles away to this palace. One day as he was painting, he receives a letter. And his letter says, uh, Dear person, uh, I'm very sick. Please come and visit me. This letter was sent by his wife saying that she's gravely sick. That she she was she she's uh, you know with her, her with a third child, right? Giving him, and they don't know when when the child was coming because we're talking about the past. But she knew it was coming, and she was really sick and wanted her husband to come. Worried, this 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 father this the father the husband decides to take the horse for days with no sleep to to visit. His wife. Unfortunately, as he goes home, as he opens the door, he sees that, you know, it's empty. Now he, he thought of the worst and he goes around and asks. And he finds out that his wife not only passed away, but he's missed the funeral as well. Devastated, this man tried to find a way, tried to find a way to speed up this process. Speed up this process of giving information from one place to another as quick as possible. And this, na this, this person's name is, as I remember, Samuel F.B. Morse, who made Morse code. He made Morse code out of grief. And that's why I'm not saying that, you know, that rectangle object that you have in your pocket, this phone that you carry with you, that's not a bad thing. It's what connects us. It was, it's what connects you with the people around you. It's what connects you with a person on the com completely the, in the opposite side of the world. The phone is not the criminal then what is the criminal? What is the criminal? What is the thing that keeps you up all night mindlessly scrolling until you feel sleepy? What is the thing that keeps you up and, you know, makes you feel this great urge to pick this out of your pocket to check for any messages? What is this feeling? What, what is the thing that makes you feel the need? So every time you hear, you know, the notification sound, that you have to pick it up and see it. Who is the criminal? Or what is the criminal? Not just any mind. A mind. A mind. A mind that's filled with what? Vexation. A mind that's filled with mental pressure. A pressure that builds and builds and builds and builds. Due to what? Due to desires, due to ignorance. You see, a lot of complaints that I get from lots of parents is, is, is that, you know, like, sorry, Nanza, my child is addicted to his phone. You know, she's always on social media. 
right? Please, please do something about this. This is the trap that we all fall into. This is a trap that we can all fall into. Because can anyone say, look, I, my mind is under my control. I can control my mind the way I want it. Anyone can say that they can control it? Can anyone say that their mind is void of ignorance? Can anyone say that the mind is void of desires? Simply put, can every one of you not think about a pink elephant? Stop, stop thinking about pink elephants. I mean, elephants are grey. Why are you thinking about pink elephants? Come on. It's okay. Take a firm determination that you're not going to think about pink elephants. You know, a pink elephant with pink skins and then a pink trunk. And maybe a pink tail. Stop thinking about pink elephants. They don't exist. Come on, think about animals that exist, not about pink elephants. C can you stop thinking about pink elephants? Even as I've stopped talking about pink elephants, every single time there's an image of a pink elephant in your mind right now. You can't control that. You can't control that. But yet, we sometimes feel, you know, I'm not going to be addicted. I'm not dependent on my phone. I don't need it. I remember statistically, someone had made an experiment and, you know, they were able to find the result that if somehow the internet was to stop, if internet was to stop, you know, Say, let's say, God forbid, like a, a comet goes and hits a satellite or hits the satellites. Right? It goes and hits all of, I don't know, Elon Musk's Starlink satellites as well. And we've lost all connection and no internet. I think they said that within five minutes, if I remember correctly, the world, the world would go into chaos. Because why? We have become so dependent on, on, us, on such something so small to give us great pleasure. As in, we are, we are now unable, we are unable to actually be, again, satisfied at this moment. We are always looking to force the something to make us feel pleasure. Now, I just, wanted, I just want you to, I know that we've all lived in the 21st century. So I do know that we've all have a phone and we've all gone through some sort of social media. So this is an experience that I know all of you had. And you all know how much of a black hole this is. Because, for example, when you pick up a phone, Or when you do anything, what are you expecting? What are you expecting when you do anything? That what I'm going to do is going to give me what? Pleasure. That what I'm going to do right now is going to give me what? Pleasure. For example, when you pick up the phone, do you think this phone is going to make me cry? No, you're going to do something with this phone, either connect with a loved one, either go searching something, in order to search for what? Pleasure. Think about it in the morning. In the morning, right? In the morning, you wake up. Why? Why do you wake up? Again, is it not in search of pleasure? You wake up. Okay. Do you all enjoy brushing your teeth? It's a good argument, isn't it? Do you all enjoy brushing your teeth? Now, 
there'll be some of you who say, hey, yes, I enjoy, I enjoy feeling my mouth being clean. And there'll be the other half that says, you know, I don't like brushing my teeth. It's, it's a burden. For those of you who like brushing your teeth, right? Be my guest. Brush your teeth all day long and see how long, it, and how long you enjoy it. Just like brushing in the morning, brushing after eating, brushing after doing... But yet we still brush. Why do we brush? For a mind that is under ignorance, the mind that is submerged in ignorance, the reason why we brush is because we're looking for what? Pleasure. That we're looking for some sort of pleasure. That's why, that's why we look for toothpaste that give the most mintiest feelings, the most coolest feelings. Because why? What does that make us feel? It makes our mouth feel clean and fresh. It makes our mouth feel so clean and fresh. Have you all seen toothpaste that have layers? Or have different colors? So there are toothpaste, uh, you know, white, blue, green, red, right, with the different layers. And we, we feel more prone to buy these sort of things. Why? Because we think that each layer, each layer gives us a different advantage. This layer probably makes our teeth stronger. This layer makes it cleaner. This, make, this layer makes our breath smell better. But actually, it's just the same thing with a different ink, right, a different dye. But it makes, because we feel, because we feel that when we put this on, we start brushing our teeth, that it feels so much better. However, is that true? Because again, we, we, again, not, we don't brush because it's a responsibility. We brush because we want pleasure. Same thing, we pick up this phone and we start scrolling online, right? Mindlessly scrolling on whatever social media platforms there are. Trust me, I don't think I know all of them now. Used to? Now, I don't know. When you go scrolling from one to another, always you scroll up in search for what? Pleasure. You know, what is the difference between gambling and, and scrolling up in social media? What is the difference? One of them uses money. The other one uses time. Okay, okay. This is your phone. I, I just just a, a warning. My artwork is amazing, right? I, I'm gonna have to like label things, but. This is a phone. This is the first thing that you get. The first thing that comes on your phone, right? Say you're on social media, whatever it is. You, you turn it on and you see it. That most likely is something that you like. Then you swipe up in hope that the next post will be will be something that i like you put up and it and it is something that you like so you think great and again and again and again however you and i all know through experience that everything that goes into that comes on the screen is it always something that makes you happy? Is it always something that makes you happy? Have you heard? Um, so we've talked about this before in the past, but for those of you who haven't heard of it, is uh, there's a in psychology there's something called. 
uh, operant conditioning, where, as I, if I remember correctly, B.F. Skinner, a psychologist, he wanted to train animals to do things. So, for example, he, you know, if you were to give a treat, say if a if a bird was so, what he did was he there's a box, and in this box there's a small door where it can open to give out food, and it's a button. He was able to train birds to press this button, and every time they press the button, food comes out. And they would eat it, press the button, eat it, press the button, eat it. And now they are, they are conditioned to think that by pressing the button, I get food. But the thing is, if we always were to press buttons and get food, there'll be a point where we press buttons, but we're not hungry, so we stop pressing buttons. If this phone was to continuously make you happy, we get bored of it. We think, hmm, don't want it. Let's move on. This is because now there is no... For pleasure to be there, what, what, what is the opposite side? What's the other side of the coin with pleasure? Vexation or else this mental pressure that builds up. Without the buildup of mental pressure, can you get pleasure? So you need, to, you need to be able to build up what? Mental pressure. So when you swipe up and it's something that you don't like, now there's time for your mind to build up the mental pressure for the next one. For the next one to be something that you enjoy, therefore you relieve that pressure, therefore you feel what? Pleasure. But actually, right, you can be rewarded in several ways. So the, this uh, psychologist found that you are able, you can be rewarded in, in, in different ways. You can be rewarded every time you press the button, you get food. But he found a more addictive way. After you press the button, at a random interval, food comes out. Now the mind attaches itself to the button because why? It's random. We don't know what's going to come next. If you knew every five times you press the button, you get food. Again, you get no, you, get, you normalize to it. Therefore, there's a point where you get bored of it. But if it's random, if what you if the pleasure you get comes at random intervals, now what? Now you're able to feel pleasure. No, you are you are now stuck in front of the screen. This is why we are a we are currently coming to a point, right, where people can't get themselves out of this screen. Now I sincerely think that all of you have now gone past this. I don't think any of you actually sit in front of a screen and scroll endlessly until you feel tired and you fall asleep. I don't think so. And I hope not. But I'm showing you the actual, almost the, the mechanics behind this. Why people get, why people get addicted to these things. And how to get out. No, it's not just these. The other day, I, I was talking to well, more children, and they were telling me how you know themselves and people around around them, their friends around them, are getting have the, one of the shortest attention spans there are. So they can't, they can't stay sat down for more than a minute. A minute, two minutes, three minutes maximum. So the teacher in schools are becoming more and more creative to find ways to get a child sat down and listening for, I don't know, a 45 minute long period. Now, if you ask, if you ask, why, why do we have such short attention spans? It's because we are always constantly looking for something. What is that? Happiness. There's a certain amount or a, th a certain threshold 
of mental pressure or vexation that the mind can bear. Once it goes beyond that, that threshold, now we're looking for what? Difference. We're looking for something to do what? Something to change. We don't want the same thing over... For example, if I showed you a video of paint drying, how long do you think it'll take for you to become bored? Any, anyone, anyone enjoys seeing paint dry? Anyone? We don't like seeing paint dry because why? It is boring because we're looking at the same thing, change very, very slowly. Our mind can't, can't handle that much amount of what? Vexation because why? We want something to be different. But if I were to show you a video of something that changes very quickly, one thing flashes, another thing flashes, flash, flash, flash. Now, how mind likes that because why? Every single moment you're feeling what? Pleasure, 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 pleasure. Change in this, change in that. And so, of course, a, a, a mind that gets used to these short changes cannot focus on something for a long period of time. A person who is who's used to, who has a very low threshold of focus. So for example, if I start talking about a story, right? And I say, once upon a time, right? Once, once upon a time, there was a girl, right? With a red hood. Her name was Little Red Riding Hood. She went to a forest, right, right, with a basket, and there was a big bad wolf. Even stories itself have what? Frequent what? For example, if I was to say the same story but differently. Uh, so once upon a time, there was a girl called Little Riding Hood, with a hood and a basket, and she was walking through a forest. She was walking and walking and walking and walking and there's a path and there's like gravel on the path and she can hear the steps and steps and steps. She can see flowers on both sides and more flowers, red flowers, blue flowers, green flowers, pink flowers, yellow flowers, purple flowers, salmon pink flowers, uh, cobalt blue flowers. Now, what does the mind feel? <sighs> and next, please. Thank you, next. Because why? Our mind is searching for what? What's next? Then she meets a, a wolf. Yay, pleasure. Because why? The scene has changed. Now what? Now, she, now he meets a wolf. The wolf asks, Little Red Riding Hood, where are you going? Again, even because we have to realize, number one, our mind is in constant search. Is in constant search for what? Pleasure. And the thing is, once you feel pleasure, you forget about what? The moment you feel pleasure, our mind covers what? Covers what? the amount of mental pressure, the vexation that you are feeling, it covers it. it. It almost pretends as though it's not there. So for example, imagine you're, you, you want to buy a new watch. Right? You want to buy a new watch. And so what do you do? What do you do? Because you want to buy a new watch, does a, a watch just fall out from the sky? Right, like Mr. Bean. Does anything fall out from the sky? No, what happens is what? You have to, number one, go and look for one. Either go, because nowadays we have online shopping, thank God, right? Or else you have to go to the shop in general, right? Take a car or a bus or the train or whatever to the shop, look. But now we have online shopping, so you don't have to go anywhere. All you do is pull out this rectangle and you search www.watch.com and out comes results. And then what? And then you, you want one and you want to buy it, but you see it's expensive, so what do you have to do? 
you work day in, day out, day in, day out, earning all this money, and then you buy it. When you buy and you put it on your wrist, you forget about the amount of days you had to work by. The mind almost hides that from you. It covers it all up and says, oh, forget about all of the suffering you went through. Forget about all of that mental pressure you went through. Just feel the pleasure. And yet we enjoy it and we think, wow, I felt so great when I bought this. Do you... <laughs> I felt so great when I bought this. However, however, we because we forget about the pleasure, the, the, the pressure that the mind had gone through, we just focus on the pleasure and we, we bind ourselves, we grab onto this. Now, we've all been to school. And we, we are still in school, right? Yeah? You're in schools, right? You're going to school? You're going to school? Yeah? What is the worst thing about schools? Now, you can all answer as well because you've all been to school. What is the worst thing that, that happens in schools? Learning. You don't like learning? <laughs> what else? What else? Well, put learning to a side because that's... Some people enjoy learning, so put that to the side. What else do we, do we not like? What do you not like about school? At the back, what do you not like about school? Anyone? Wake up early in the morning. But most, 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 the one thing that we absolutely abhor or absolutely detest is what? Exams. Like homeworks are bearable depending on teacher, but exams? You see, if you were to remember, right, doing an important exam, and even though you pass that test, right, pass that exam with flying colors, if I asked you, like, you know, you passed that exam, you're really happy, right? Do you want to do the test again? There and then you'd be, I'm happy with my marks. I'm happy with this, right? I, I don't want to do the test again. Because why? When you do a test, what do you feel more? You feel all of this mental pressure, this, this vexation that builds up inside, and you compare it to the amount of pleasure you get. And you realize, you know, I had to spend weeks and months preparing for this for a couple hours of pleasure. Mm. Do I want this pleasure again? No. However, when it comes to say, say, going on to this, now uh, you don't feel, now the mind thinks, doesn't, doesn't want to even think about the pressure because why? It doesn't see the pressure. It doesn't see the vexation. Instead, it feels what? Pleasure, pleasure, not yet pleasure. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. No, no, not yet pleasure, not yet pleasure, not yet pleasure. Oh, pleasure, pleasure. But they don't feel, they, we, our mind doesn't come to the realization that, no, the mind was under so much suffering. The other day I got, uh, so every week I get to talk to my parents and my mother had shown me a video of, a video of me when I was younger, right? She'd taken, she had taken this video because she was angry with me, right? Mothers, of course, right? She, she took this video because she was angry at me, but uh, I don't know why, but she just did. It was of me playing a game on my phone, right? So she was mad because I probably didn't do something that she wanted me to do. And she starts taking this video secretly behind my back. And she shows it to me. And I just, and in the video, I'm playing this game. You can't see the game I'm playing, but you can see my face. And all you can see is me going. <sighs> but at that moment, while I was playing this game, do I see my own face? 
Do I see my own face? Do I remember the amount of, of pressure that this mind had to go through? That mind had to go through? No, all we all I remember is, oh, I passed the next level. Great. Let's do the next one. See, we forget about all the pressure that our mind has gone through. And that's because of what? It's not that our mind chooses to forget. It's not that our mind chooses to forget. Instead, it's because of what? A security feature of the mind. What's that? Now, we've all... So I know that you've all listened to lots of sermons, so I do want to talk about this part as well. It's because when the mind feels all this pressure build up, because every mind has this, there's a moment where the mind goes what? Goes? When the pressure builds up in the mind, there's a point where the mind goes... insane there's a point where the mind goes insane and that's well, we, we, we tend to call it insanity mode because the mind is feeling all of this pressure build up it goes insane and when it feels when it goes insane it hides all of the pressure and what remains is what it just remembers what? Wow, I had I I just ate a bowl or I just ate some chocolate. Wow, that chocolate was amazing. I enjoyed that chocolate. But forgetting about the amount of mental vexation the mind had to go through. You see, this is a trap. This is a trap. Everything that the mind. So actually, if you if you think about it, there is no point of blaming a child. Or no, there's no point blaming yourselves. You know, yesterday I spent three hours scrolling on this this rectangle, right? I spent three hours scrolling. There's no point of blaming yourself because why? Why is it, why can you why can't you blame yourself? Because who's in control? Who's in control? Okay, the mind thinks, right? I want pleasure. The mind has the view, it wants pleasure. So why it picks up the phone. Then it turns, it opens the application. Whatever application you use, you put it inside. So normally, when it comes to the older generation, Facebook is number one, right? When it comes to younger generation, it's other stuff like, I don't know, you tell me, like TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, to say this, right? It's in search of pleasure. That's why it picks up the phone. When it picks up the phone and, and it picks, and almost as a habit, because what we have to remember is our mind is very habitual. It, it does things out of habits. Like, don't you sometimes find yourself sitting in front of, like, know, coming home after a tiring day, and you sit on the sofa, and you, the TV turns on by itself? Or, or you're, you're sat on bed, and the phone comes out, and you've automatically clicked on an icon, and then you realize, oh, I've opened Facebook. Because why our mind works in a very habitual way. So you press, you normally would press something out of habit. That's why if you were to change an icon in a different place, it feels so strange. So for example, you take this one and you put it here. When you, play, when you take out your phone and you try to click it and it's not here, you become frustrated because why? That's not what you're used to. The mind is used to what? It being here. 
So anyway, the miner searching for pleasure will click on this. So the, the first thing that comes up is what? Something that you like. Unfortunately, unfortunately, because of ignorance, what do you think? Where does the happiness come from? Where does this pleasure come from? This. I like this. It made me happy. Where did my happiness come from? This. So what? Then you swipe up. Next one. Again, searching for pleasure. Because why? The mind is always in search of pleasure. It wants to be happy. Where does happiness come from? Here. Am I happy? Yes. Swipe up. Am I happy? No. That's okay, because why? My happiness comes from what? This. So next one. Next one. Will. Next one. Will. Give me pleasure. Swipe up. Now, this is talking about the phone, right? But it's not just phones, is it? Think about your entire life. Oh, sorry. Don't think about your entire life. Just think about yesterday. How many things just yesterday did you do in order? Oh, did you do dependent on it to make you feel pleasure? I remember uh, someone telling me, this, telling me this, and it was um, something that, that most of us would do is that, you know, when you walk past the fridge, when you walk past the fridge, right, what do we do? What do we do? We walk past the fridge, what do we do? <laughs> you give it a knock. You open the fridge, and all you do, all you do is nothing else but just scan. You close it, and you walk on. As you're coming back, you know what's in the fridge. However, you know, I may have, you know, something may have just popped up inside. You open the fridge. <laughs> Then you close it. I think they, they say uh, you can save, I don't know how many megawatts of power just by like, stop opening the fridge. I mean, yes, we, we <laughs> so if we want to save the world, what should we do? Because why, due to fossil fuels and whatnot, we have come to uh, climate change and global warming. So how, what can we do to stop that from happening? Stop. <laughs> opening the fridge. Stop opening the fridge for no reason. Because still, we open the fridge in search of what? Pleasure. Hmm, what is in the fridge? Is there something that I like? Oh, there is. But you know, I have to be, I have to be, you know, I can't eat that now. Close the fridge. Open the fridge again, look again. Oh, it's still there, thank God. Close the fridge. Open the fridge, still there. <laughs> close the fridge, dinner time. Open, take, close. Again, searching for what? Pleasure. So here's the thing. If we are constantly in search of pleasure, There are many, many, like these are black holes, aren't they not? These are black holes. The moment you're sucked inside, there is no escape. Once you're sucked inside, there is no escape. Until someone does what? Someone throws you a rope and pulls you out. We are sucked in the black hole of pleasure, always constantly in search of pleasure. Doing something, 
every single day for what? Pleasure. So ladies and gentlemen, the question is, do you really, really want this to be the source of your pleasure? Do you really, really want this to be the source of your pleasure? Do you not think your pleasure can be attained otherwise? I mean, think about this. Just think about this. We become dependent. So currently, our, our world is seeing a massive increase. A massive increase of what? People being addicted to what? Everything. People are becoming dependent on, on everything to make them happy. That's why, you know, that's why we are looking for ways to make our lives, to make this faster, make, make this arrival of this faster. That's why... When you, when you go shopping, you used to have to go shopping, physically go somewhere. Now what do you have to do? Pick up a phone, search, order, and you can have next day delivery. You don't need to wait, you, you don't need to wait for long anymore. All you have is next day delivery. Or food. Right? Before, you know, we have to cook food. Now you can just put it into a, a microwave, press 30 seconds, press go, and you have what? Instant food. Why? Because we don't like waiting for this pressure. We don't like waiting for the pressure. We like the pleasure. We don't like the pressure, we like the pleasure. So we are constantly in search. We're constantly in search of what? Pleasure. What can I do now? And because we have, we have become, we have almost lowered our threshold for the amount of pressure that we can, we can hold. We are constantly unable to stay without pleasure. That's, this is why the Buddha talks about patience. This is why the Buddha talks about patience. Because if you are constantly looking for this, trying to relieve the pressure that you are constantly facing, you have nothing else to do. But if you are patient, if you realize I am feeling this pressure build up, I am feeling this immense amount of pressure that's building up inside of me, and you wait, and instead of relieving, you do what? You try to see where did the pressure come from? Now what? Now what? Now the pressure, the mental vexation starts to decrease. Okay, here's a question, right? For all of you who, who are practicing, Let's say, let's say you are given a situation, right? So today, right, in, in today's almsgiving, you are given a situation where you are getting to, you're going to serve, or you are being served your favorite food. Oh, let's, let's give an example, right? I don't know, what sort of things do you like to eat? It's great because beyond my head. Uh, let's say chocolates. Yes, we all like chocolates, right? Let's say we let's say today you're gonna have chocolate. So I like chocolate. So what do you have? What do you have? If you like chocolate, if you have the sentence "I like chocolate" in my head, in your head, what is the next thing that comes comes after that? What's next? 
So like one. So I'm simplifying this to a great extent, right? To make it as simple as I possibly can. So for everyone to be able to understand, right? Because trust me, this is not as simple as it looks. We like chocolate. Now what? Now what? What's a neck? What is synonymous with liking chocolate? Mash. It's pen. You like chocolate, therefore you're feeling mental pressure. Right? Therefore you're feeling vexation. What should you do? A. So it's like almost like who wants to be a millionaire, right? This is the millionaire question. You like chocolate. You are now vexing for chocolate. Do you A. Eat the chocolate. B. Don't eat the chocolate. Or C. Something else. of time sticking. Okay. Just a raise of hands, put your hand up if you think it's A. I'll start with the, the, the least, least one, right? Put your hand up if you think it's a C. Put your hand up if you think it's B. So B is not eat. Put your hand up if you think it's A, eat. You see, this is, this is a trick question. It's actually a trick question. Why? If you eat chocolate, right? When you're vexing for chocolate, if you eat chocolate, what happens? So let's give us another color. Let's say it's black. Okay, you eat chocolate. What do you reinforce? What do you reinforce? Oh, I, you know, chocolate. Chocolate, it's amazing. So, reinforcing this. Therefore, more vexation. Therefore, again, you eat and you go into the cycle. What happens if you don't eat chocolate? You, you, you can see this happen, right? Imagine, so those of you who are children, right? If you told your child, right? If you told your child, son or daughter, from today onwards, you are not going to eat chocolate. What do you, okay. If your parents were to tell you this, what would you feel? What would you feel? You feel lots of this, yes, lots and lots of this. And you know, children are very obedient, right? Children are very obedient. They always listen to what you say. So what do they do? They get some money, right? And then they, and then they go to the nearest shop, corner shop. They, they secretly under the table, Right, give them the money and they get the chocolate. They come home, they eat the chocolate and they put it into, not the bin. Why not the bin? Because mother will always find out if it's in the bin. So what do they do? They put it in their pocket. They put it in a school bin. Now mother doesn't know. But if you don't eat, what, what still happens is, just like the child, you are still reinforcing what? Oh, I like chocolate. Chocolate makes me happy. So, A is incorrect. B is also incorrect. Then C. What's C? Something else. See, it doesn't matter whether you eat or not. 
what you have to do is you have to understand I am currently feeling what? Mental pressure. Where is that mental pressure coming from? That is what we're supposed to ask. Not, should I eat it or not? Mm, I like chocolate. Should I eat chocolate or not? No, that's not the question we should ask. I like chocolate. I feel vexation. Why am I feeling vexation? Because when you ask yourself this question, you come backwards and you realize, oh, because I like chocolate. Why do I like chocolate? Because I think chocolate, chocolate is tasty. It's, it's something that gives me what? Pleasure. Hold up. Mental pressure, eat, relieve a mental pressure, more. Not eat it, no relief, but still, we still like it. Pleasure doesn't come from the mental, uh, doesn't come from the chocolate, but comes from the what? Mental pressure. Only then, when you truly understand that chocolate, chocolate isn't what makes me happy, only then are you actually able to eat chocolate. I'll give you an example, right? Something that I've done, which I, I regret 100%. Uh, so I remember when I was younger, I went trick-or-treating. Hmm, yeah. You go around house to house, go and trick-or-treat, and you get buckets of, uh, of chocolates and sweets. I remember one year, I, you know, I'm a very obedient child. I listen to what, what my parents tell me. My father told me one day, right, many, many years, every year he'll say, you know, puta, only have one chocolate a day. Me being an obedient child thought, you know, this year I know better than my dad. So what am I going to do? I'm going to eat. And I can tell you, I had the same, same, same sort of chocolate. I can't remember what it was. Same sort of chocolate, but I had like hundreds of those. So what did I do? I started eating, and eating, and eating, and eating, and eating. The TV was on, so of course I wasn't in a good, I wasn't focused, so I was just eating and eating and eating. And I can tell you that the chocolate itself, the taste itself, feels as though it changes. Because why? You're not actually eating chocolate, are you? You're eating this feeling that, ooh, chocolate, nice. Oh, I enjoy chocolate. I must have chocolate. I, ha I need chocolate. If I don't have chocolate, I'm not going to survive. It's my comfort food. I must have it. And therefore, this idea of chocolate, every time you eat it, you're not eating chocolate. You're eating your own mentally formulated chocolate. It's only once you get rid of this mental pressure. Can you eat Still a mentally formulated chocolate, but not, not something that is fake. Not something that is false. But now, when I say true chocolate, don't say I don't think you're actually eating true chocolate. Anyway, that's a different story. True chocolate, you'll never have you'll never be able to taste. But as aside from the point, you'll be able to actually eat chocolate. So again, coming back to the phone, coming back to social media, coming back to something that we're dependent on to make us feel so much pleasure. Where does pleasure come from? Where does that come from? Not that you like chocolate, but you know, you like, I don't know, you like, cat videos, right, of funny cats falling down or whatnot. Why? Because you think that this is what makes you happy. That's the thing. So I have briefly touched upon the topic. This is, okay. Some of this, some of this I know most of you know this like the back of your hand. 
vexation, pleasure. I've heard of this day in, day out. I know this off my heart. But the thing is, even though we know this, we still fall in the trap. Even though, even though we know that pleasure comes from the mental vexation, we still what? Fall into the same trap. Except there's a difference. What's the difference? Once I fell, I fell into the trap blindly, now I'm willingly putting myself into the trap. So we've talked about the trap. We've talked about the trap in general. But the question is, how can I get out? How how can I actually stop this? Where 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 is the exit? For you to find the answer of how, what can I do to get out of this? How can I get out of this? Because, ladies and gentlemen, this is this is our almost our right. Yesterday, I was able to talk to some teachers, like, I mean, school teachers, and trust me, when I talked to these school teachers, I just remembered, you know, teachers and students are all the same. So we gave, uh, we went to the school before and we had certain activities that we did with the children. And we gave the same activities to the teachers. And the teachers performed in the same way. Why? Because we're talking about what? Something that we continuously forget or something that we're really una- we, we become unaware of is that you know, where are the people? When we talk about people, who are we talking about? Because can we ever talk about people? You see, we can never actually talk about people. But what can we talk about? minds so am i talking to people can if i ever want to talk to a person can i ever talk to a person you're telling me i can't i can't talk to people what that won't i get lonely not being able to talk to a person can i not talk to people I can just talk to what? Minds. Now it gives a good it's a good question, right? Who here has the biggest mind? Who here has the biggest mind? Anyone anyone has the biggest mind here? Who here has the smallest mind? Buddha, how old are you? How old are you? He's got the smallest mind, right? He's a seven-year-old. His mind must be small because some of you are in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s. So your mind should be much bigger, right? Is it? It's like maths. What do I mean it's like maths? One plus one is two, no matter where you go. In another hundred years, will one plus one equal three? No? In another, you know, 500 years or 635 BC, right? One plus one was minus two. No? One plus one was always what? Two. No matter how how old maths is, whether we go and ask Pythagoras and go, hey, Pythagoras, what's one plus one? Pythagoras will always say what? A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? No, he'll say one plus one is two. 
If you go and ask Isaac Newton, will you, will you, if you ask him what one plus one is, what would Isaac Newton say? F equals ma. No, he will say one plus one is two. If you were to ask the Buddha, what's one plus one? He would also say what? <laughs> Ignorance causes attachment. Is that what he will say? No, he'll say one plus one is two. So no matter how old, no, that's not saying if you ask a toddler, right? Like a small child, like a baby, like, baby, what is one plus one? They won't say two because they don't know, but still the logic is the same. No matter how old, no matter what time, What is the difference between a child and an adult? What is the difference between a child and an adult? If we ask this Buddha to come on the stage, and we ask the old one, the oldest one out of you to come on the stage, forget the body, but the mind. What's the difference between the minds? One thing, one thing. Well, two kind of, yeah, okay. We'll say two things for now. Number one is the views they hold. And number two is what? Memory. But let's say this Buddha had the ability to, like, I don't know, remember past, past, past lives. Now who's older? Now who's older? He remembers three lives, you only, re you only remember your lifetime. Who's older now? See, that's the thing. <laughs> you know, when you hear age is just a number, it truly is. Because why? A mind is what? Ageless. It doesn't have an age. A mind doesn't have an age. So when I was talking to this teacher, I truly saw that. Whether you're a small child or whether you're a teacher, you all that's that there is a mind. Which mind is faster? Who has the fastest mind? Okay, let's have three three contestants, right? Again, billionaire the, the next millionaire's question, right? Who has the faster mind? A. Uh, huh? A, Mark Zuckerberg. B, uh, Stephen Hawking's. C, I'm thinking of uh, Tom Cruise and D. <laughs> Arthur C. Clarke. Who has a faster mind? A, B, C, or D? The time starts now. All minds are? No mind is bigger than the other. No mind is smaller than the other. The only difference between minds are what? The only difference between minds are what? The qualities they hold. And that's why we worship the Buddha, because why? Because of the the quality, the Buddha quality that that mind holds. See, it's, it's very strange when you think about this. We're not worshipping... It's not the Buddha has qualities. It's not the Buddha has qualities. It's what? The mind holds, or the mind has the qualities of the Buddha. Therefore, we call it the Buddha. So who are you giving, who are you giving dana to today? Who are you giving alms today? To, who are you giving alms to today? The Mahasangha? Minds with the qualities of the Noble Triple Gen, the, the the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Mahasangha. 
So it doesn't matter who you're giving it to. It doesn't matter how you're giving it. Is it quality that matters or quantity that matters? Quality. Who do you think you're giving it to? What do you think the qualities of the Mahasanga are? If you have that in your mind when you're giving, your 50% of the equation is complete. Now the other 50% is the receivers. It's the receivers receivers duty. But your 50% is is complete. When you're giving to the when you're giving to the mahasanga in your minds constantly have ask yourselves Ask yourselves, what, what are the questions you have to ask yourselves? What are the questions you have to ask yourselves? Who? Who? Why? And? How? These are, these, these are the universal questions. Who, why, and how? As you're giving, as you're giving these arms, ask yourself, who? Who am I giving it to? Oh, the monk in front of me? No, no, no. Why am I giving it? For what reason? And when you, when you think about how, the question how is very inter interesting. Because you, you can answer the question how in various ways. Depends, depending on your understanding of the Dhamma, your how will change. So ask yourselves, who? Why and how? Who, why, and how? If you can do that while you're offering arms, if you can do that while you offer Pirikara, if you can do that while, while you know, sitting down and when you're chanting the stanzas for the Buddha Puja, just ask yourselves, who, why, and how. That is the maximum. You'll, you'll, be, you'll be able to accumulate the maximum amount of merits you can ever accumulate by asking these three questions. Simple questions. Just ask yourselves. When you're giving the Buddha Puja, ask yourselves, who, why, and how. If you get, if you get the opportunity to sweep, ask yourselves, what? Who, why, and how? If you get an opportunity to help someone, ask yourself what? Who, why, and how? I want these questions to be drilled into your own mind, as in drilled into the core of your own mind. No matter what you do, ask yourselves what? Who, why, how? Constantly do that. Who, why, and how? Who, how, I think, I think when you, when you ask the question what, I think in my head at least, uh, it's covered by how, because when you think about how, you have to think about what and how. For example, what am I doing? It's covered in my head at least. It's covered when you think about how. So actually, who and what go hand in hand, I know. Uh, Yes, who and what? You could say, yes, who, why, how, and what? I, I would think that's a good, a good idea as well. Yes. Just ask. Because if you ask, you shall receive. All right. I am very aware of, aware of the time, and I have to let you, guys, uh, let you all go, because you have to prepare for your dakineyo, right? Something that I think you should all be very excited for because it's something that in this entire, your entire sansara, probably rarely happens. You know, it's such a, such a, so it's such a shame that we can't remember. We can't remember our past because if we can, 
today is like a day like no other. You know, you know how you know people have this idea that you know when I go to uni, that's gonna be the best day of my life. When I get married, that'll be the best day of my life. And actually, today, today is the best day of your life. Sorry, not life. I'm wrong. Not your life. Today is the best day of your entire sansara. So make sure, make sure it stays like that. Make sure you accumulate merit like no other. The best day, the best day of your life. Okay. Before we conclude, do we have any questions? So uh, let me remind you that at two o'clock today, uh, for all of our English speakers, we have a sermon in the Neva Singare. Do we have an English word for that? I don't know. <laughs> the what? The hostel. There you go. The hostel. So much easier, isn't it? The hostel. I think the 16th, number 16. If I am correct. But anyway, you'll have our lovely Anagarikas to uh, escort you along to wherever you need to be. So you're all invited to come to that sermon. I... Yes. Okay, do you have any questions before we conclude today's session? Today's sermon? I'll take the silence as a no. Okay. Let's take a few moments to transfer merits and conclude. <coughs> Let's take a few moments to transfer the merits we've all acquired by making offerings to the infinite virtues of the noble triple gem, chanting Pirith, Nisun Dharma, and engaging in various meritorious deeds today. So first and foremost, let's remind ourselves how incredibly fortunate we are to be in receipt of Lord Buddha's teachings. And with immense gratitude, let's transfer the merits to the Bhikshu Bhikshunis, Upasakas Upasakas, who since time in memorial have protected and preserved the sublime teaching of the Buddha, and passed it down to the generation of a noble lineage in the form of the Tripitaka, which is thankfully available to us today to study, to understand, to comprehend Dhamma. Let's also take a moment to transfer merits that we've all acquired to all the members of the Mahasangha present throughout the world, including all chief players of the chapters, who have dedicated their lives to a new path and committed themselves to the betterment of all sentient beings. Let's not forget among them will be the monks and nuns resident in your local temples and nunneries, who have always been by your side to thick and thin, come rain or shine. Let's all take a moment to to Guru San Nansi, as well as other monks resident in the monastery, as well as the Anagarikas, Anagarika is attached to the monastery. Let's all take my own transfer merits and express our gratitude to those who made great efforts to, to disseminate the teaching of the Buddha, be there by translating sermons, share them out with others, inviting others to join them, make the power of merits. If any of them be born in the world of plane, may they redeem themselves being born in the abyssal plane, made by the power of the merits, may they abstain from the meritorious deeds, fulfill the meritorious deeds, fulfill the noble eightfold path, and attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Let's all take a moment chance to the merits we require to our devotees, friends of the monastery, for sake of merits, continue, continue to sustain the Mahasangha. This includes everyone of you who have contributed to, con to the construction of the monastery, to those of you who provide the Mahasangha with shelter, arms, roads, medicines, those who pass in their know how to extend their well wishes, make the power of the merits. If they've been born in the world of plane, may they redeem themselves and be born in the bliss of plane, may by the power of the merits, may they abstain from the meritorious deeds, fulfill the meritorious deeds, fulfill the noble eightfold path, and attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Let's take a moment to transfer merits to our mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, nephews, nieces, our elders, friends and acquaintances, employees, employees, and to all those who have helped us, supported us, assisted us in any shape or form. By the power of these merits, may they be healed in physical and mental ailments, may they overcome any obstacles and obstacles in their spiritual progress, may they abstain from their meritorious deeds, fulfill the meritorious deeds, fulfill the noble, the noble eightfold path, and attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Let's take a moment to transfer merits to the Devas, Brahmins, spirits, demons, 
primarily the Sakudeva, as well as numerous garden deities who are committed to protecting and fulfill the sum of the Sasana. As well, take a moment to transfer merits to our garden deities who keep watch, watchful eye over us and keep us out of harm's way. May the power of the merits, may the prosper the divine power and wisdom, may they obtain from the meritorious deeds, fulfill the meritorious deeds, fulfill the noble eightfold path, and attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. As well, take a moment to transfer merits to our ancestors who have predeceased us, to all that have been friends and family to us in this infinite long journey in Sansara. So, they also take a moment to transfer merits to all those, uh, the army as well as the armed forces, the police force, who have sacrificed their lives to protect the peace and harm of our nation. May all those who lost life in, in the war be the friend of her, rejoice in the merits required today. They also take a moment to transfer merits to all those who lost their lives in natural calamities such as tsunamis. Earthquakes, landslide, pandemics, reminding ourselves among them will be those who have been friends and family to us in this in, in this infinitely long journey in Sansara. May the power of the merits, if any have been born in the world of pain, may they redeem themselves being born in the discipline. May the power of the merits, may they abstain from the meritorious deeds, fulfill the meritorious deeds, fulfill the noble eightfold path, and attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And finally, in the soul resolve, may the power and blessing of all the merits acquired throughout, throughout the day. We have been witness the event of many hundreds of thousands of Arthur Nuances. Arad main once is in this blessed land itself. And finally, may through, may through the power of all the merits required throughout the day, you and I and everyone who made this program a success become a Arad Nuanse or Arad main Nuanse in this very life in the era of the Gautama Supreme Buddha itself. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. The Mahasangha will now transfer their blessings to you. <coughs> Raga gin in me that nwa Desha gin in me that nwa Moha gin in me that nwa Nimbana paramasuka in Sukita Taravitnva Nimbhana Parama Sukhain Sukita Taravitnva Mamada Sialu Loka Sialu Satnvayo Nimbhana Parama Sukhain Suketa Taravitnva Nimbhana Parama Sukhain Suketa Taravitnva Nimbhana Parama Sukhain Suketa Taravitnva Raga gini niveva Dvesha gini niveva Moha gini niveva Nivan sepa lebeva Nivan sepa lebeva Nivan sepa lebeva Tunrangi, Susi anantam haogun abelin Siyo loka siyo satyo me Nimbhana parmasukhe ngusukhe